the smell of born and rubber. So behind me of course is the S10S from Joyer and I've never reviewed this brand. It was just sent to me to review to give my opinion. And so far I'm actually quite impressed. What seems to be happening across the electric scooter, I guess industry lately, is that a lot of electric scooters are listening to the people who use them daily. And on this, of course, it does have the fantastic split rim design. So if you got a puncture, I made a video on this already. If you got a puncture on a scooter like this, it's a split rim. You take off the wheel, you take off the split rim, you pop the new tire and tube on, and away you go. There's no need for tire levers, there's no need for sweating, there's no need for anything like that, and a complete novice can do it. And that's one of the good things about the S10S. And of course, on this model, it doesn't state it on the website, so I probably will say that to them, because it is a good selling point in my opinion. It does come with these Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. And on the website it just says disc brakes, it doesn't say mechanical or like zoom hydraulic or anything like that. So when I actually took this out of the box I was actually pleasantly surprised. So this is my first ride on the Joyer S10S model. I've never actually reviewed an electric scooter from this brand. So I'm quite interested to see how it holds up because the price of this is actually quite cheap. It also is a dual motor split rim design, each motor is 1000 watt each and you can get a range of up to 80 kilometers and a top speed of up to 65 kilometers an hour so i will be testing the top speed in a few minutes but i just want to try and get a feel for the scooter there's a small hill coming up ahead of me here so we'll just stick it on to single motor for now and on gear three so it should climb this with no issues Yep, absolutely brilliant. Of course, this does come with the 10 inch hybrid tires, which seem to be getting more popular. Nearly a lot of electric scooters I've gotten recently have the hybrid tires actually fitted. Handlebar width on this is actually quite generous, I must say. Another thing actually that I like about this is there's no noise coming from it. And the suspension on it is kind of like a bushing design. So it's technically maintenance free suspension. How that would hold up over time, I'm not sure, because of the air bushings and they eventually do wear down, similar to cars. So let me just stop here. It's this, controls are actually quite easy on this. If I want to just put it onto dual motor, you simply hold down the plus button. So I'll stick it onto dual motor gear one. It's actually quite, so, let me see, dual motor gear one gets you 20 kilometers an hour. Okay, and by the way, we are of course on a full charge. And another thing about this is that this is the 60 volt, 18 amp hour model. Okay, gear two, of course, a lot more torque. Let's see what the top speed is on gear two dual. Okay, gear two dual gives you 35 kilometers an hour. Okay, top speed test. Dual motor. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. Fifty-seven. But handling is not too bad. But I think sticking to maybe you could reality just stick to gear two. You should be comfortable enough. Stability is not too bad. I think because of the front of the electric scooter is a bit light and because of the power in the electric scooter itself it's not as a hundred percent stable as i would like it to be like going 55 now is not too bad but when you kind of go past 55 the stability starts to get a little, tiny bit shaky but yeah see a little bit of a wobble there so yeah to sum up I would stick to around the 50 km hour top speed but the good thing is as well you can actually change the top speed on this if you want so you can actually just do that to the P settings on the electric scooter which is really good to see another small hill here because it's a 60 volt you have a really nice bit of power there 
So in reality, you know, it should climb any hill. Like you shouldn't have a problem at all. Like this, uh, this hill here is uh, kind of a little bit steep. So we can start off on dual motor. Let's just do gear one. Yeah, of course, look, no problem at all. Gear two is actually really comfortable to ride. And of course, turning a bend like this, for example, from these tires, the hybrid tires that have, of course, the side tread, gives you more than enough cornering. So you wouldn't really have a problem of slipping out from underneath you. So I think it's actually designed quite well. Of course, the only concern is, of course, that slight wobble when you go around the 53, 54 kilometer hour speed. So it's just something to keep in mind. When it comes to the suspension design, it is maintenance free, but it is bushing suspension. So it's not, you know, there's nothing really there. Like it's extremely firm. I'd say for like really tough bumps, it will definitely help. But because you have the tennis tires there, they should pretty much do the job. But I think off-road might be a bit of a struggle for this because the suspension doesn't have a lot of give on it. But the deck of the scooter is actually quite generous in size and it's not that, you know, it's kind of reasonably up off the ground. So there's a good bit of clearance there. So you're not kind of afraid of damaging underneath. But I don't think it's an off-road scooter. It's definitely more of a commuter scooter. You can just see, it's so strange, the power in this. It's just like, slight dead spot. Whoa. Next of all, the scooter just pulls you along. And actually, that is the same on gear two. Gear three is the same, just take a look. Dead spot, dead spot, dead spot. <laughs> it's kind of strange. I've never actually felt something like that on a scooter. And then as soon as you get going, just take a look here. It's, it's like there's a tiny dead delay in the power output and then it just says, you know what? I'm gonna just push, push everything. <laughs> so that's, it's a weird feeling, but it is what it is. That's the way the scooter's designed. Wheel spin. <laughs> Again, another example of that dead spot. Nothing, nothing. Next of all, <laughs> just pulled you along. I think that top speed is more than what you need to be honest like you don't want to go crazy I'm, I've said it so many times speed is one thing but I prefer range over anything else and another thing that so many people ask is is it, is it height adjustable with so many electric scooters that I review on this model it is latch goes down this goes like that I am 5 foot 8 and I think that it is just about okay for me at the maximum height from a stability standpoint so just kind of keep that in mind i think if you're like five foot ten eleven you know and beyond i don't think the height would be the best for you from a stability standpoint going those higher speeds you do get of course a front light which is quite small i think another additional light at the top of the handlebar would be needed and then of course you have a back led light you can take a look at this suspension design here that's kind of the way it is. There's bushings kind of in here. So it doesn't have a lot of travel. And I think it's from a cost perspective. If they would have had to put the standard spring suspension in here, the price would have been a lot more expensive in this scooter. But you know, it is what it is for the price you get. On the back of the scooter, there is only kind of one concern because this back mudguard is only supported by this bracket here and it's not supported on the far side. I think you'd definitely just need to be careful when you're taking this off steps because you don't want to hit underneath here and kind of break this I mean the bracket is quite thick it is quite sturdy you know there's not a lot of wobbling here so I think you just kind of need to keep that in mind and there's your LED lights going around this scooter which is okay brightness you know they they're better than nothing put it that way to fold the electric scooter it's quite simple you just pull up your it's kind of like a safety catch so you pop that up there with your hand and then you have a lever here you put your kickstand up that just folds like this it kind of locks itself and then you just lift the scooter as normal to be honest it is a bit heavy you know <laughs> you just need to keep that in mind to of course unfold it again push down the latch like so foot on the deck and then yeah here we go wait till that clicks into place 
and then you pull down an additional safety lever here I think it's a it's an okay design but that's again another one of the reasons why I wouldn't probably take this off-road be just because of that reason I don't know I'm a tiny bit skeptical about it but I think it does an okay job so let's kind of have a quick recap okay you have a 60 volt 18 amp hour battery with this you've dual motors front rear uh, full hydraulic brakes zoom uh, kind of decent stability going around 50 kilometers an hour and of course you have decent range up to 80 kilometers and you have speeds of up to 65 kilometers an hour but in reality you're probably going to get like 57 58 it's so hot it's so hot out today Whew, i'm boiling in this helmet uh, what, what do you kind of get for your money well you get kind of decent spec it is only around 800 euro and when these horse came out they were actually retailing from what i understand well over 1000 euro and i don't think they were worth that i think because they've dropped the price dramatically i think it's kind of worth kind of what they're asking right now maybe it's not my favorite design of electric scooter but i mean it has kind of more or less everything you need except for like really good suspension but you can't complain i mean sometimes when you pay something a little bit cheaper you get lower spec of course like anything else and of course from a safety aspect you have the zoom brakes there you have the led lights front where you have led lights on the side here so you can't really complain i also think it's suitable for most riders up to around five foot ten maybe pushing it a little bit but i think it's kind of suitable for that kind of height when it comes to who is it for it's for somebody who's looking to of course go reasonable distances every single day it's not for somebody who's looking to use it for off-roading i wouldn't say it's for beginner because of the actual spec of the scooter and the actual weight and then of course if you're not used to going higher speeds you probably wouldn't be safe for that type of person so it's more for somebody looking or looking to step up from an AK show me scooter a nine bot that type of thing as far as value for money goes i think it's actually worth what they're asking but of course like what i said you need to keep in mind the suspension is firm and once you go over 50 kilometers an hour you get a tiny little bit of a wobble but that can be solved easily by changing the piece settings on the display which there is all videos on youtube actually about that and it'll only take you literally a minute and you can actually speed restrict the whole scooter if you want again through the piece setting so if you live in a country where the speed is limited like 20 kilometers an hour or 25 kilometers an hour it's a uh, it's, it's a piece of cake to do so you don't have any worries there whatsoever so if you enjoyed this video please give it a like subscribe and i'll talk to you in the next video